Not long ago, we made an instructional video on how to get started with Deltec Acumen Brisk. We will link that video down in the description of this one for those who either have Deltec Acumen Brisk or if you'd like to learn more about it. One of the charts that we showed briefly in that video is the risk exposure histogram. It is one of several charts common to various types of risk assessment software. And with respect to schedule and cost risk for Monte Carlo simulation based risk software, it's an essential chart to understand the confidence in likely project outcomes based on your risk profile for your project. Before you would be looking at and analyzing a risk exposure histogram, there are some key inputs. And one assumption we'll make today right off the bat, although various types of risk assessment software can have a risk exposure histogram, our discussion today is oriented towards risk software that works with a detailed project schedule and potentially also a cost model, whether that model is tied to the schedule or standalone. The reason why risk software that is tied to the project schedule is an elegant solution is that it takes advantage of the plan that you may have already created for project execution. Let's talk about a couple of those inputs. The first is some form of uncertainty assignment on different areas of the project schedule. This can be three point duration and cost uncertainty estimates. And some tools will help you make these assignments easier so that you're not doing a lot of typing. For example, Deltec Acumen Risk has these red, yellow, and green sliders, useful to assign what I call a risk temperature to a task or to a roll up. The closer that you move the slider to red, the more uncertain your project team is about the outcome of the work. In Acumen's case, there are sliders for both schedule uncertainty and cost uncertainty, although some organizations may choose to take advantage of only one or the other. Another common set of inputs are risk register events, discrete and named threats and opportunities. These are risk events that refer to a series of distinct events that can and maybe will happen during project execution. These work best in software that allows risks to be mapped directly to the areas of the schedule that they are most likely to impact. Once uncertainty is established and risks are defined and mapped to the schedule, it's time to run the Monte Carlo simulation. This simulation will execute the project thousands of times, each time assuming that uncertainty impacts the schedule differently and that certain risks will or won't happen based on the probabilities and impacts that you've assigned to each risk. We recommend that you look at the risk exposure histogram first to gain confidence in project outcomes before looking at any more detailed charts, such as a risk driver's tornado chart. Looking at the chart, on the left side y-axis of the chart, we have the number of simulation hits for each date that's represented along the x-axis. Remember, by setting uncertainty and risks and then running the simulation, there are a number of different theoretical project outcomes, thousands. Sometimes it will finish earlier, sometimes later. This chart for schedules tells you when it may finish and how often it finished on each of those possible finish dates. The taller the bar on the histogram, the more simulations resulted in that specific finish date. It's a good idea to take a moment to study the curve itself and the spread of the date ranges. And there are some statistics that will prevent us from having to do any of our own math to compile this information. That's something that your software is very good at doing. Let's start on the far right. In the case of this project, we have 100% confidence that it will finish on or earlier than the latest date in the simulation results. This is known as the P100 date. If we want 100% confidence in a date that the project will finish by, that is the date to use as a guide. 
most often teams do not necessarily advertise the P100 date. It represents a unique set of circumstances where nearly all project risks occur and uncertainty is at its worst. Many projects instead focus closely and study the P80 or P90 date. These are still conservative dates to assess, but they don't assume that nearly everything goes wrong during execution. In the case of this sample project, the P80 dates noted here. This does not mean that the project has an 80% chance of finishing on this date. It means that 80% of the simulation outcomes occurred on or before this date. P80 will always be earlier than P100, and a more aggressive target like P50 will be earlier than the P80 date. P50 is the date that 50% of simulation outcomes finished on or before. The chart also has a cumulative S-curve. As you move from left to right, each bar's hits are added to the cumulative curve. If there's long tail risk on the project, this S-curve will be flatter. If the outcomes converge closely to one single date, the S will be narrow and tall. These visual indicators, combined with the confidence level results like P50, P80, P90, P100, these will help you with assess the variability in execution with respect to finish dates for the project or any key milestone in the project as well. One more statistic is the p-value for the deterministic finish date. This deterministic date is the finish date from your project planning tool, such as Dell Tech Open Plan, Microsoft Project, or Oracle Primavera P6. Let's start with an extreme example. Your deterministic finish date has a P0 level of confidence. This means that all risk-adjusted outcomes for your project are later than the finish date in your project plan. This is bad news. This means that the occurrences of virtually any risk and any amount of uncertainty will cause your plan to be delayed. In this case, review the schedule itself for reasonableness and assure that your uncertainty and risk assignments are not overwhelmingly pessimistic. If everything looks right, the project plan may need another look as it may be impossible to execute given the risk profile for your project. We would love to see a deterministic p-value somewhere between the P50 and P100 dates. This doesn't mean that everything is completely fine, but it means that if risk is managed and mitigated effectively, the project has a reasonable chance of finishing on time. If the project culture is risk aware and prepared to take the steps toward risk mitigation to prevent the predicted risk driven delays. Let's talk about cost now. The chart looks strikingly similar, but with currency values instead of dates in the chart and in the table beneath. Your P80 value will be a dollar amount and the same rules apply. Look at the range of outcomes and assess the validity of your deterministic cost estimate by taking a look at the various p-values. If you are doing both a schedule and cost risk assessment, it's a good idea to take a look at both the schedule and cost risk exposure histograms with respect to one another. For example, if the P80 date for the schedule suggests significant delay, but P80 cost is spot on with the original cost estimate, you may still expect to overspend based on schedule delays alone. Acumen Risk, the tool that I use, allows you to merge the schedule and cost models so that expected schedule risk delays will lean appropriately on cost outcomes, driving the risk adjusted project cost forecast higher based on schedule risk. I realize that this is a very technical topic and chart, but I do want to make sure that as you use risk software and look at these charts, that you're not just running them. You're running them and then looking for key indicators as to the risk health of the project. In the near future, we'll be looking at more charts that will help answer 
this question. If the risk exposure histograms are reporting schedule delays and cost growth, what are the root causes of these increases? The risk exposure histogram alone does not answer that question. However, it does let us know whether we should utilize additional charts and analysis to help answer that question. Don't worry though. In the near future, we'll be talking about the risk drivers tornado chart, which will help us with the what, the why, the where, and the when, when it comes to understanding our top risks and mitigate them. Thank you for watching today. If you have any questions, let us know down in the comments and we'll see you next time.